Hi, my name is Jeffrey Pangestu and my student number is 13041680015. Today I'm going to explain social welfare functions and social welfare maximization. So without wasting any time, let's get started. In this video, there will be two sections. So the first section, I will talk about social welfare functions. First, we need to understand the three desired features of social welfare function. The first one is any set of complete, reflexible and transitive individual preference are given. And the second feature is if everybody prefer X to Y, allocation X is socially preferred and should be ranked ahead of allocation Y. And the last one is social preference between two alternatives only depends on the ranking of the two alternatives. This means when there are only two allocations, such as X and Y, social preference ranking should only depend on these two allocations instead of the others. And there is error impossibility theorem show there is no perfect way to make social decisions. As a result, we have to give up one of the desired features, and it will probably be the last, be the last one. So we have to give up the features that social preference between two alternatives only depends on the ranking of two alternatives. After understanding the desired features of social welfare functions and ego impossibility theorems, we can now construct a utility functions. And I would like to use some examples for allocation x and y to explain it in an easier way. So suppose that allocation X consists of 3 apples and 2 watermelons while allocation Y consists of 2 apples and 3 watermelons. So the function of utility function is to summarize individual's value judgment. So for example when we say person I prefer allocation X to Y this means the utility function of allocation x is greater than the utility function of y. So in our case, it means the person prefer allocation x which consists of 3 apples and 2 watermelons instead of allocation y. However, we, need to, we must remember that this function is only depends on one individual instead of the society. So to get a social preference, we add a sigma ahead of the utility functions and n is referred to the number of individuals in the society so we basically sum all the utility function of one allocation for each individual in the society so in this case allocation x is socially preferred to allocation y so it means allocation x which consists of three apples and two watermelon is socially preferred since sigma of utility function of x is greater than the sigma of utility function of y. And this is the full form of social welfare functions. Two characteristics we must remember is is an increasing functions and the rank different allocation depends only on the individual preference. Now this is another form of welfare function with sum of utility welfare function. So it's basically the same as the social welfare function, but here we add an A, which refer to the weights and indicate the importance of each agent in the society to the overall social preference. In this second section of the video, I will explain welfare maximization. So we have learned social welfare function and now we can examine welfare maximization problem. So first we use the notation this to indicate how much individual I has of good J. So let's say there are N consumer and K goods in the society. Then the allocation X consists of the list of how each of the agent in the society has of each of the goods. Now we can pause a welfare maximization problem. So it's written like this. So what we are trying to find is allocation that maximizes social welfare. Here I have an important note. 
So maximum welfare allocation must be parental efficient. And this statement can be proved and illustrated by using the diagram below. So this diagram is between two individuals and there are some curves. The first one is utility possibility set. So it's the set of possibility utility in the case of two individuals. And the boundary of this set is known as utility possibility frontier. So it's the set of utility levels with parental efficiency allocations. In other words, this boundary, every point in on this boundary is associated, is associated with parental efficiency allocation. Besides, in this diagram, there is also ISO welfare curve, also known as indifferent curve. So this curve depicts those distribution of utility that have constant welfare. So there are three different ISO welfare curve. However, the welfare maximum point is only occur when ISO welfare curve intersect with the boundary of the util utility possibility set. As I mentioned before, every point on this set, on, on this boundary, is associated with Pareto efficiency allocations. So this means welfare maximum must be Pareto efficient. So this point is Pareto efficient. So in conclusion, we, we can say that the welfare maximum or maximum welfare allocation must be Pareto efficient. That's all for my video. Thanks for watching.